Ladies and gentlemen, Psalm 77 verse 1 and then Psalm 78 1 to 4 says, I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. When you cry out to God and he hears you, that goodness that is given to you, you should pass on, not just to the next person, but to as many people as possible. And if you have families, to the next generation and the next generation after that, so that they can show forth the goodness of God. Now, in case you didn't understand what I said, I'm going to say it another way. If someone does goodness to you, pass it on. And don't stop passing it on. Because it will be multiplied in you to others. The red capes are coming. The red capes are coming. You and your hearings galloping through the streets to warn us. One if by land, two if by sea. Lex Luthor was saying to Senator Finch in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It seemed like a mad rant from a madman, didn't it? Some people likened Lex Luthor to the Joker because of this scene. But in fact, it is a very pertinent saying. In fact, it has roots in the American Revolution. Chris Terry used that line from a line that came from the American Patriot. Paul Revere. Paul Revere said, The red coats are coming. The red coats are coming to people in Lexington and Concord towns of Massachusetts. He was warning them in the midnight ride of the advancing British army, which they called the regulars because there, it was, there was no United States of America at the time. It was just known they were British colonies, okay? What was this army trying to do? It was trying to apprehend some key people in Lexington who were actually moving in a direction of going away and separating themselves from the British and Britain and the Queen. And so he went through the night to these towns on April 18th of 1775, warning them that the British was coming so they could, especially their militia, could defend themselves. And that resulted the very next day in the Battle of Lexington and Concord, the beginning battles of the American Revolutionary War. So the statement that Lex Luthor was making is not a light one. It's rather deep. And he means it in terms of Senator Finch, She's the one saying, the red capes are coming, the red capes are coming. This is what he's saying to her. This is what she's saying. He's trying to convince her, at least, that this is what she's saying. And he's liking her unto Paul Revere, great patriot. And one of the catalysts towards the American Revolution. Now... These were really words of flattery, as well as words of sarcasm almost in the same breath. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, as he was thumping his glass rather heavily after Senator June Finch did something he didn't quite expect, which was she told him she was not going to grant the license for him to bring in the kryptonite stone into America. And we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. But first, I want to go to something else. In Justice League, we see another Paul Revere. This time, it's in Bruce Wayne. 
Bruce Wayne says, there are enemies coming from far away. I need warriors. I'm building an alliance to defend ourselves. He said that to Arthur Curry. And why that is like Paul Revere, just as how Lex Luthor and flattering Senator Finch is really comparing her to Paul Revere, is because Bruce is going around the world looking for people with special abilities and warning them and informing them of an attack that is coming to the world and that they need to defend themselves. Very much like what Paul Revere was doing. Warning of an impending attack that the people in Lexington may not have known about. Similarly, Lex Luthor is saying that Senator Finch, he's alleging and flattering her and saying, your hearings and what you're doing is you're warning us about these Kryptonians attacking us. So in short, what I'm saying to you is that Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor's alleged flattery of Senator June Finch and her hearings are actually references to Paul Revere. And so we can call them American Patriot Paul Revere's archetypes. Bruce Lane in Justice League is behaving exactly like a Paul Revere archetype. He's warning the world of an enemy that's coming and he wants them to prepare themselves so they can defend against that enemy. Pretty much like how Patriot Paul Revere is warning Lexington and Concord towns of the British Army coming to arrest some people so they can prepare themselves to defend themselves against them and that started the American Revolutionary War. Now, what's interesting is that, of course, Paul Revere says, the red coats are coming, the red coats are coming, and Lex Luthor, Chris Terrio is the, uh, by the way, the writer of both uh, characters. Chris Terrio, like phonetically and in rhythm, uh, does exactly the same thing to hint to you, okay, this is where this is coming from. Where Lex Luthor says, the red capes are coming, the red capes are coming. Just like how uh, Paul Revere says, the red coats are coming, the red coats are coming. But he's a little bit more subtle in Justice League. In Justice League, he has Bruce Wayne saying, there are enemies coming from far away. I'm building an alliance to defend ourselves. It's still the same spirit of Paul Revere, but it's just a little bit more subtle. And what's interesting about Lex Luthor's uh, saying so that you can go back and look because I'm sure a lot of you when you heard Lex Luthor saying the red capes are coming the red capes, you're thinking to yourself I've heard this before where did I hear this right <laughs> and when you look online then that's when you begin to find out oh my gosh this is he's using the American Revolution he's liking Senator June Finch he's flattering her opposite uh, actually uh, he's referring to her as Paul Revere Right, but it's flattery because he's trying to manipulate her, and it's like she's seeing through it now. And just in case you don't understand, I'll use another quotation of Lex Luthor earlier on, where he said, We don't have to use a silver bullet, but if you forge one, well, then we don't have to depend on the kindness of monsters. And he was talking to Senator June Finch regarding weaponizing kryptonite and getting it imported into the country as a deterrent against the Kryptonians, the red capes. Okay. And what he did was he manipulated information in her hearings where he had a false witness report that Superman had killed a whole set of people in Africa, Nairobi, Africa, to get people to hate Superman. And he, was, he hoped that he had manipulated Senator Finch to be on his side. So he invited her and some other uh, senators who had the hearings to his Lex Corp so he could talk to them about the kryptonite that he wanted to import into the country. And he was saying, you know, there, you remember, there are more Krypton, Kryptonians around here. There are more of them. And so we want to weaponize the Kryptonite as a deterrent to ensure that they don't attack us like how the Kryptonians did the first time with General Zod. So he's making sense. I mean, he's saying you need to have a weapon to protect yourself. 
just in case, just like how America has nuclear weapons to protect themselves just in case Russia decides to have a nuclear war, right? Makes sense, right? He's making sense, but he's really manipulating the scene in the background to make people hate Superman and to make Senator Finch also question Superman. And then he says, uh, he's, he's, so he's trying to manipulate Senator Finch. So when he comes and he says the red capes are coming, the red capes are coming, he's actually doing two things. One, he's being a bit sarcastic because he's beginning to realize she's seeing through his facade. But he still goes on to try and flatter her and try to get, you know, chum up to her because he's trying to woo her into continuing along the lines of, listen, man, I need that kryptonite. Let's get the kryptonite. So he's trying to argue with her about that. And not argue, sorry, he's trying to woo her at that point in time. So he's the red capes, he's thumping his glass because he's getting impatient. And he's saying, the red capes are coming. The red capes are coming. You and your hearings. Now, he's being very sarcastic when he said you and your hearings. But then he covers it up by saying, galloping through the streets to warn us. So he starts off sarcastic, and you can see it in his face. And then he very subtly, and this is how very educated people, if, you, if you've been in a... Uh, if you've been in universities, if you've been in politics at the highest level, people have a way of sending double messages. They would say one thing, it means two different things. And so what Lex Luthor did there is not, he's not the best at covering up how he feels, because you can see he's irated, he's kind of angry, and he's still trying to keep the facade. And then he says, you and your hearings, and you can see him snare a bit. You can see him gulp. He was a little bit shocked that she... He didn't get to manipulate her. He says, you and your hearings. And then before he gets conflicting and, he, you know, he starts to lash out at her and be combative, he decides to go back to the facade. And he says, galloping through the streets to warn us. You're the great hero here. You know, warn us about these red capes. You're the one. That's why I called you in. <laughs> right? So he thought he had tricked her. And then she says, you can say whatever you want. You can take a weapon of assassination, make it a deterrent. You know, uh, you can you can take a bucket of piss and call it Granny's PhD. I'm not going to drink it. And so when he realizes she's not going to buy into his facade, and he realizes he sees through her, he turns around and he still maintains his position that the red capes are bad. And he says, we know better now, don't we, Senator? Devils don't come from hell beneath us. They come from the sky. He's calling Superman. <laughs> He's calling Superman a devil. And he later on in the movie calls Superman a devil again, where he says, and the mother of a flying demon must be a witch. Because <laughs> this is how he feels about Superman. He does not like Superman. And the reason he does not like Superman is highlighted. This is all very subtle by Chris Dario, But in the beginning, when he's talking about these exceptional beings, gods among men, living among a little blue planet here. When he looks at the little blue planet, he gets ticked off that it's not his little blue planet. And he slams the planet down in a fit of rage. And then he tries to keep his facade, facade again. Because the person who wants to be God here is Lex Luthor. And the reason Lex Luthor wants to be God is because Lex Luthor feels he knows more than everybody else. He's the one manipulating them like puppets. He feels just like Steppenwolf feels. That human beings are inferior, primitive beings, said Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf looks at them like primitive beings. You don't deserve to have this planet. <laughs> and this is my right. <laughs> Steppenwolf said all that, right? Lex Luthor feels exactly the same way. He has a little bit more facade. He's not just straight out going to say, ah, this is my planet. Screw y'all, I can do whatever I want, right? But basically, Lex Luthor can do whatever he wants. You saw him get out of prison very easily, right? So Lex Luthor, he's smarter than almost everybody. And so because of that, sometimes he underestimates people's intelligence. And in this case, Senator June Finch is not buying it. So he has to... He, when, if you watch the follow-up, he says, A certain senator from Kentucky is soft on security. National security. I can't remember what he said. Soft on security. I don't think he said national security because he said a planetary security, right? So, Lex Luthor has his agenda, obviously, but he's keeping his facade. He's trying to maintain his facade till he comes straight out with Superman and he, like, lets ever he just lets it rip. <laughs> and then you get to see he does not like Superman. 
Superman is his enemy. He does not like him. He says, I don't hate the sin. I hate the sinner. And yours, your sin is existing. <laughs> Obviously, he hates Superman. He hates what Superman represents. He hates him. Okay? When he's talking all this God talk and all this... He hates Superman. This is the most cleverest way they've ever done it. BVS shows that Lex Luthor hates Superman. He hates what Superman stands for. He hates everything about Superman. Okay? He feels that he has the birthright to the world. He would be able to manipulate the world and do whatever he wants at the, the tip of his fingers were it not for stupid-ass Superman who's spoiling it. And the thing about it is we know... Because the whole world knew that the Kryptonians are bad people, man. Didn't you see what happened with General Zod? They're bad people. Kill Superman. So he's trying to build dirt on Superman. Remember this is coming out of Man of Steel. After the Kryptonians. That's why he says there are more of them running around here. He's not talking about Wonder Woman and those. No, he's talking about Kryptonians. That's why he did the meta-human meta uh, thesis. is because he's looking for more Kryptonians on Earth. Because if Superman was there, that means there must be more of them somewhere, right? Hiding among us. So he was looking out for that. Lex Luthor is the guy who manipulates people's xenophobia. He's not a xenophobe. He's a megalomaniac. He's not just a megalomaniac. He is a sick. He's not mentally sick. He's not, he's not a, a, he has no mental problems. But he is as evil as they get. Lex Luthor is the real deal when it comes to being evil. He's not mad. He'll pretend. He'll, he'll play any game. He's not mad. But he is evil. This guy is the epitome of evil. And so, and he's all about control and he must manipulate everything. He must be ahead of everyone. Anyway, in the end, this guy who's trying to flatter Senator Finch is referring her to Patriot Paul Revere. Alright? And when he realizes his facade has been opened out, he doesn't openly say, yeah, I hate Superman. No, he wouldn't say that. He just says, that painting should be upside down. And that's the way how these, these, these people in high circles actually behave. Which is why I love the depiction of Lex Luthor. I hate the character. But I love the depiction, well done by Jesse Eisenberg, well executed by him, as well as well executed by the writers and Zack Snyder and so on. That's why I said Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice is a masterpiece of a film. But Justice League, it's much more sincere. This time Bruce Wayne is a much more sincere guy. Now we actually see Paul Revere. So Lex Luthor was flattering, trying to flatter Senator June Finch so he could get her on his side with an empty flattery by calling her Paul Revere and her hearings, but a literal Paul Revere who was actually standing for something was in the making with the Justice League. So the Justice League has a lot in common with the American Revolutionary War that began April 19th, 1775. But understand that's the beginnings of the Revolutionary War, just as how this is the beginnings of the Justice League defending the Earth from other threats that will come. All right. So I just wanted to share that in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I went into more detail in Lex Luthor because I thought this character is so layered that it's just beautiful to break him down for other people to understand him. He's a fantastic villain. And what's nice about uh, Justice League, it's a lot more straightforward. It's a lot more sincere. Um, it's, it's much more straightforward and sincere. But I will tell you this. It's beautiful to see Chris Terrio take the negative end of uh, the American Revolution, the narcissistic end, where a guy is actually trying to use that to manipulate a situation, and then come with the sincere, the other angle of it, that's the symmetry of Zack Snyder, the sincere aspiration of this. Just like how we had the warped aspiration of Batman, where he thought that Superman was the threat, just like Lex Luthor, and he, he was part of Lex Luthor's plan to take out Superman. Just so we have now Bruce being sincere and actually doing something that really counts, and actually now we see the pure take on the American Revolution through Paul Revere. 
So it's just beautiful to see these two connections, but also link them to the bigger picture. The American Revolution, its heart, its core, its spark, the hope that ignites the spark. So why I'm saying this is because Star Wars The Last Jedi builds on this. Right? The hope that lights the spark. And that's why I wanted to just kind of take some time to share this with you guys. Um, that's how brilliant Zack Snyder and Chris Terrier were with Batman v Superman and with Justice League. And for those people who keep on... And by the way, just, 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 just by the way, no comic book movie has done this. I'm just saying. No comic book movie has actually used the Paul Revere... Uh, archetype I challenge anybody go go ahead I challenge you if you say the Avengers nope nope because Captain America was discovered in Captain America the the, the, the first Avenger and uh, you know the guy who was rounding up everybody with the patch which I just can't remember his name for whatever reason I just drew a blank uh, he didn't have him go to do anything until uh, the Avengers movie. And even then, they were looking for an artifact. They were looking for uh, the Tesseract, right? They were trying to make sure the Tesseract didn't go into the wrong hands. Someone stole the Tesseract. I think it was Loki. It wasn't about an in uh, oncoming invasion. See, when Batman met all the members of the Justice League, it was to inform them that it's an oncoming, oncoming invasion. Just like how Paul Rivera was doing. And then they needed to defend themselves. That was not the case. When uh, uh, Nick Fury, that's the name. Nick Fury met Iron Man. I wanted to recruit him onto the team. It wasn't because it was an oncoming threat. Right? Think about what I'm saying. So I'm just saying that this is different. And so I just want to make it clear. That people think the Justice League is, oh, it, yeah, it's a typical superhero, but it's not the typical superhero movie. It's not. And I do these videos to make you guys think so that you will realize just what kinds of value Warner Brothers, Zack Snyder put into these films. Chris Terrier. These films are loaded. I love to see Snyder's cut, but the cut we have is loaded enough. You guys have a great one.